Today, what I'm gonna try and do is I gotta take the roof rack off, tighten up some bolts on that, uh, and then start sanding and prepping the paint because it's all, the clear, the clear coat is kind of trashed, I peel off the previous wrap. So I wanna smooth all that out and put the new wrap on. The seats are in, the engine runs, and then I've got a carbon fiber hood that I'm gonna try and get installed because I wanna see it on there. It's a lot, but totally manageable. Let's get to it. Uh, this is why I have to prep all the paint on the car because it's just, in the meantime, Zach works on the other car. And in the other meantime, Daniel's over there working on whatever he's working on. I don't really know. He does what he does. I don't keep track of that. That's how this uh, is all gonna go because I've never actually done this before. You can see how corroded this uh, part is. This is the hood latch, it still works. That's pretty sick. Got to get that door gap a uh, little fixed up there. That looks pretty good. Work has been done today and it is a mess. Uh, I've been working on carbon fiber all day basically and I've never done body work much less carbon fiber. So this has all been a new experience for me. Um, but I managed to get it all figured out. Uh, I've got all the bolts fitted and matched up there. I've got the bolts inside there matched up. I've got underneath here, right there. And this one was the trickiest given that I had to really force it down to get it in there. But came out great, looks amazing. I'm proud of it. Now on to the next side. Now that I know what I'm doing, I should be able to get this much quicker. This one does fit a little better than that one did. So there should be less forcing of uh, that panel to go in. I'm also very tired. I know it's only half the week, but I've been going for like three weeks beforehand. So I'm feeling it already. It's official, the time has come. The carbon fiber is done. Look at this. There are many things that I had to learn about doing this and I managed to do it pretty damn well. The truth is, this is a prototype carbon fiber set. Nothing's ever been done uh, like this before. So I'm learning, but I'm willing to take that risk because this looks sick either way. I mean, look at this, look at that regardless. I'm proud of it and I think it looks great. Um, I can't wait to finish out the rest of the livery on this car, make this all cohesive because then it all makes sense. But also another time has come, the time for bed. And I have a massive mess that I need to clean up before I go to bed and leave this shop. All right, so now that the steering rack is in, the next step is take the fenders and all the carbon back off because I don't want to get sanding or paint or anything on the carbon. I want to keep them raw and clean. Hang on one second, this bolts.
So I brought this outside because I'm gonna sand it. All I've gotten so far is taking the mirrors and the door handles off so I can wrap easier, but holy moly, it's hot out. I wish I would have done that inside, but ultimately what the sun is gonna help do is get the wrap off, melt it a little bit and pull it off. So this legendary number 17. Wow, I almost feel nostalgic about it. Like I do feel nostalgic. Oh yeah, I forgot there was a paint rub there. That's kind of why I went with these stripes. I'm not talking to you. Now that I'm down to the last piece of wrap, I wanted to say that I've been excited about getting this new livery because it's much since Zach's dancing. I'm not a visually loud person. And as exciting as this car was, it's not truly who I am. I wear all black all the time. I am basically the same person every day. I'm not like a boisterous, loud person. So when Vero came to me, and said that they wanted to do another watch. Like if you remember the Boxster, we did a watch to match the Boxster. It was a silver and yellow and black. This car is gonna be much simpler. The new watch, it resonates with me and who I am. Like when something is bright and red, you feel like it's a fiery, spicy thing. When it's pink, you associate it with more feminine and soft. And when it's blue, you associate it with maybe tech or, and then when it's white, you associate with cleanliness or something or, but the black, black is ominous and it's, it's dark and it's moody and brooding in a sense. But you also get to have this sense of sophistication. And one of my all time favorite cars is the new Batmobile done by Ash Thorpe. I love it. I think it's fantastic. I've always loved Batman. So I'm trying to make this kind of live in that sense also. Like, I, th this car can be any character I want it to be. And uh, it, there's no reason for it to stay the same character all throughout his life. You know, when I initially got the prompt of this watch and design a livery after that, I started wanting to play with the idea of doing the Hispanic theme, this Mexican, uh, you know, ornateness to it. Because I grew up in central Washington and I worked on the farms and I worked with a lot of migrant workers and I learned and I hung out with, and I ultimately didn't learn Spanish, but I could understand what they were saying. I just started getting into it and it felt a little too forced. It felt too much like I was trying to make it a uh, low rider Mexican thing. And that's not what I was going for. And I, the fact that I couldn't do it quite right to give the nod to the Hispanic culture, uh, I just didn't feel right doing it. And then my girlfriend showed me this movie, uh, Death Proof. My friend, you. Yeah. Is it my scar? It's your car. Is it safe? Oh, it's better than safe. It's death proof. Which is also a dark and brooding uh, car that has a character and a soul of this evilness to it. So that struck me. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to go with. If you haven't seen Death Proof, go watch it. It's, a, it's an amazing movie. Death Proof. This car is 100% death proof. It's ridiculous. But on that note, I'm going to take the last piece of vinyl off of the original car. Daniel, this is it. The final, this is the final piece. What's that? come to a point where it looks like I am 10 steps backwards and it looks like it just came out of the field. It was necessary because all the paint with all the clear coat was peeling off and making bumps in the surface. And so when I go to put the wrap over, it would show those bumps through the wrap. So I wanted to make it look like it's brand new to the most part. And I'm going to do some tricky stuff here. Where it is actually textured, I will put uh, like truck bed liner um, down here, including from here, the door seam down, that will be painted with truck liner. And then the rest will be wrapped up here. A classic uh, rock guard right here. The goal is to 
do the satin black from the door there back and then do gloss like I did uh, diagonally in the past. You know, a drift livery, I'm not going for a livery that says, hey, I wrap cars, like this is the brightest color ever. I'm gonna keep going. I got lots to do still. I gotta sand this bumper and then I gotta start painting uh, the mirrors the way out there. I gotta paint the mirrors and then get the bumpers painted in the truck bed liner. So off I go. Let's talk about the oldest modern method of keeping time, watches. Specifically, Vero watches. Vero is a small company of passionate people that are determined to build watches that challenge the assumption that nice watches should be unaffordable. Vero has turned me into a small time watch enthusiast, small time, but watch enthusiast nonetheless, by showing me not only the craftsmanship, but the build quality and the design as well. For instance, the Workhorse watch. Why do I like this model? Well, because it's called a Workhorse. Why else would I be here 15 hours a day working on this car? But if you happen to be tougher than the watch itself, don't worry. If you break it, send it into Vero. They'll take care of you. There's a lifetime 10 year warranty See on all models. So thank you to the team at Vero for sticking with me all these years as I build these, quite frankly, ridiculous cars and for staying true to the design method you believed in and the quality you stand by. VeroWatches.com. Go check them out. In the meantime, it's 9.50 and I have like five more hours of work to do tonight. <sighs> like I said, it's 9.50. Uh, so far, I've gotten the car sanded down. It's all paint prepped. I've put steel it where the rust could be. I've also put a zinc coating primer on there. I'm happy with where it's at. Um, like I said, I am going to continue working on it. You can kind of see I've painted the nose with steel it black to hide uh, any red that used to be there. So it's not obviously poking out because I don't use a front valance. I am going to make a, a skid plate bumper combination in the front there. But uh, I think tonight I'm gonna open up this. Actually, let's just do that right now. Where's my knife? So uh, with this vinyl, um, I get it from Metro Restyling. Uh, I was told about Metro Restyling from a guy that wraps the race cars at work. And I was pretty happy with the stuff that I got for the Boxster. Um, I learned a lot when I did the Boxster. And I learned that I don't ever want to be a, uh, a vinyl wrapper guy. But I also don't want to pay $3,000 to get it done. And I feel like I can do it well enough to be satisfactory. If you've never wrapped a car, there's a bunch of things that really help doing it. Uh, knife tape. This creates those smooth lines in the uh, separations of the material. Good razor blades always help. Uh, squeegees. I didn't realize I ordered that many. Gloves. The gloves are clutch um, because your hand has oils and it's kind of sticky and you have, you know, like gecko hands and you have ridges on your fingerprints and stuff. These help lay that uh, vinyl down really nicely. Like I said, I learned a lot doing the Boxster. I'm confident in this car because it's very much more geometric, whereas the Boxster is just one big bubble. There are two different types of, uh, or two brands that I typically get. One is Avery Dennison. I like to get Avery Dennison because it is a much more malleable material. For a beginner, that really helps. Uh, the 3M material is really nice and really tough, but it's just, in my opinion, harder to lay down. Um, and for time's sake, I'm trying to do, oh, more squeezes. How many did I order? The entire car is going to be a satin black. I'm gonna take my time Hopefully do it right, and if I have any mistakes, I've got some left over. This whole bill here, $750 and after ta after tax and shipping was like $790. Compared to $3,000, which I'm not saying don't go pay someone to do it and support their business. I'm saying if you want to learn a skill uh, and you want to learn how to rap, uh, not musically, uh, you can learn how to rap a car for $500 to $800. Um, I think right now I'm gonna try and wrap the nose panel Let's just see how that goes. I'm going to try that out. All right, ta-da, it's done. So that looks good. I'm going to try and do the roof, uh, the sunroof now.
All right, I'm tired. I'm done for the night. I'm gonna clean up and get out of here. All right, now I'm going to wrap. Uh, but now it's two days left to get this car done and it looks like this. Peel this off to an extent. Keep holding it out away from the car. Okay, now start to bring it in. Pull, pull toward you, hard. Hold on. Yep, keep going. Now hang on one second. Hold yours there. It's official. It's villain arc has definitely begun. That's so cool. So because I'm not like a legit car wrap guy, I don't really know what uh, pre-planning mistakes <clears throat> I could make. So I learned that some of these spots don't actually cover up very well. Like right in here, you can see there was some red trim. Uh, I made a mistake there. But uh, these difficult spots I can go in and get later, but to pre-prep them, like I'm gonna do some painting down there regardless. We just throw some steel it down there just to block up that seam. I definitely should have done more paint prep. So on this side, I've taken the liberty of doing that. I've paint prepped that seam, this seam, that seam, and down here as well. So I've decided to change my mind about wrapping the roof right now um, because I spotted this seam and from the experience of doing just the side here, uh, I'm going to take the precaution to mask this off, throw some black paint down on the seam because I'm not confident that the, the wrap will get right to the edge of this weather stripping very well. Zach, you ready to try and help lay another sheet? Do you need to do your knife tape thing? Oh, f yeah, I do. Thanks for catching that. show you something. Ta-da! And we got the axles. It's um, 11.10. I'm beat. Um, dinner took way too long, so I didn't get as much done after dinner as I wanted. We're looking good. I'm very excited for tomorrow because it's looking like that, but it's going to look done tomorrow. It's going to be done tomorrow. I've got the front nose clip done. I've got the bumper sanded and painted where I think truck bed liners not be able to get. Fenders are going to go on tomorrow. We need to put a seam sealer in there. And then the brakes, gas cap still needs to be done. I need to wrap the rear in gloss black. Shouldn't take terribly long.
already got a rock chip or a tool dent on the thing right here. official. I feel like shit because I'm so tired. It's only 12 o'clock so I have 12 more hours to go on the last day. I did however finish all the vinyl wrapping. You can barely see it but there is a subtle gloss satin difference. The whole idea of this entire car is aggressive subtlety. But now I need to acknowledge that I need food and sustenance because I'm collapsing. All right really don't feel good. So we all know what makes an off-road safari Porsche, right? The lift? No! Yeah, the lights! It's all about lights. If you got more lights, you got more safari cars. You got all the lights to see all the daylight at night. <clears throat> it's been months, but the car has only been worked on for a total of two weeks. What we've done in that time is astounding. We've completely redone a car from the engine to the transmission to the suspension to the roof rack to the paint rewrapped it new tires it's just it's a lot taking apart a car down to the shell essentially and rebuilding it refurbishing it back to some sense of glory it's so much work i had some great partners team up on this project with me and help get all these parts together and get this whole car situated so that in this very little time that I had to be out here, we could get it done. Zach and Daniel are an amazing team. I could not have done this without them. The fact that they could build this motor to such a high extent and advise me on the rest of the car with that absolute precision and expertise in everything. You know, it's truly amazing being around the right people, being around people that know how to get things done right. And I, I also want to thank all my partners that came on for this. Pelican Parts, Project X, Vero Watches, Simple Tire, Falcon Tires, Front Runner Roof Racks. And I want a special shout out to Technica Racewire for developing an amazing racewire harness. P48 Design for doing something new and creating new carbon fiber. This project has been something. It's tested my limits, everybody's limits, it's tested patience. It's been a very long three-year project. And I'm not quite done. I still have a couple more things to do. It's to the point where I can say I'm proud of what we have all made. So that's the end of this stint here in Arkansas. I, I love it. I love this shop. <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> I love the experience of being able to build this here. Anyway, I gotta go catch a flight, so I'll see you in California. God damn it. <laughs>